in today's video, we are finally taking out the trash. A year's worth of empties. These are all of the products I finished completely in 2020. My Chanel shopping bag was completely full by the end of this and I emptied it out before I sat down to film. This is my fourth year in a row sharing an entire year's worth of empties. These are the products that I used the most in 2022. Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel and happy new year. I hope everybody's 2023 is off to an incredible start. It feels so good to be back and I'm kicking things off with one of my favorite videos to film. I'm going to show you everything that I finished in 2022 and tell you whether or not I think it is worth your money. Some of these things I've already repurchased, others I would never repurchase. And I still have my trusty black Chanel bag. I've been keeping it in the closet and I spilled everything out yesterday and I was going through just to tally everything up. That's where I want to begin with the totals because I was shocked to see what I finished and what I didn't finish last year. Here's a bird's eye view so you can see all of the products organized on the floor. I only ended up with two foundation empties, one concealer, four powders, two bronzers, including a cream bronzer, one blush, two mascaras, four brow pencils, and a brow wax, two eyeliners, one lipstick, two lip glosses, and a lip liner, seven makeup removers, eight sunless tanners, four serums, three moisturizers, six cleansers, seven hair masks, and then a bunch of other miscellaneous bath and body products and hair styling products. The moral of the story is that I just did not go through nearly as many makeup products last year as I did the year before and the year before that, even with all of my no buys. And I think the quick answer is simply that I've just been rotating between so many different options that it makes it difficult to finish. So I have way too much makeup, I didn't need to film an empties video to be able to tell you that. I definitely have way too much. So I'm gonna take all of the information that I learned from this empties and use that to make smarter shopping decisions in 2023. And that's why I always recommend saving your empties. I know it's not fun to save a basket of trash, but if you can take a big shopping bag, stick it, tuck it away in a closet somewhere so that it's out of sight. But then every time you finish a product, go ahead and throw it in the empties bin and then check back after six months or even a full year if you can handle it and see what you actually go through. You might find that the products that you were actually using and going through on a regular basis doesn't really align with the products that you were constantly shopping for. So let's get into these empties. I'm going to begin with foundation and both of these were pretty late additions to the empties bin. I am shocked that I was only able to go through two foundations. Usually it's between five and seven. One thing that does make me happy is that these are two of my favorite holy grail foundations. I'm guilty of sometimes saving my favorite products to the point that I don't really use them regularly and they just kind of sit in the drawer and rot and expire when they're my favorite thing. So th those are truly the makeup products that I should be using up first. I've been singing the praises of this Hourglass Foundation ever since it launched. I use the shade 6.5 and I'm kind of torn about whether or not I'm going to replace this. I absolutely would. I will most likely wait because I need to go through more of my foundations this year. Lesson learned. So I'm going to go through some of the other foundations in my collection first, but I would say this is up there as one of my favorite foundations. I would say it has kind of a medium buildable coverage. It has a natural finish. It's not too luminous. It's not too matte. It's kind of the perfect middle of the road foundation. I think it is so flattering and it wears beautifully. It photographs beautifully. I'm going to miss this one. And then right before I moved the hourglass to the top drawer, I was using my Guerlain L'Essential. This is the high perfection 24 hour wear. It's in the matte glass bottle. Not to be confused with the glossy bottle, which has more of a luminous finish. I believe that foundation is available at Sephora. This one I purchased from Selfridges and I believe it is a Selfridges exclusive. So it's a little bit trickier to get your hands on. You really have to know your shade in advance. I wear O3N. It's incredibly perfecting. A little bit goes such a long way and it doesn't feel heavy. So it will completely even out my skin tone without looking like a cake face. Great foundation for photos, for special events. This is my full glam foundation. I missed this one already and I told myself I didn't need to replace it after I discovered the hourglass. Now that I finished the hourglass, kind of deciding what I'm going to move to the top drawer. 
I want to look at some of my older foundations. Like I think the Clay de Poe I spent a lot of money on. I would like to get my money's worth out of that one. Maybe a couple of my older Chanel foundations I'll move to the top drawer. But it's beautiful. I highly recommend both of these. 10 out of 10. My one concealer empty of 2022 is this Pat McGrath Labs Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Concealer. This is shade L1. I also went through one of these concealers in 2021. I'm currently using one of these in my top drawer. It's one of my all-time favorite concealers. It's perfection. It truly is sublime perfection. Never creases. It covers. I mean, if you have really dark circles or maybe hyperpigmentation or post-blemish marks, spots on the face that you need to conceal, this is such an amazing concealer, but the texture and the consistency is great for the under eye. I have two bronzer empties. One of my makeup goals for 2022 that I'm continuing into 2023 is to go through more of my cream products because creams will sit in the drawer and they get a little bit older. And for some reason, maybe it's just a psychology thing. I just think that cream products will get old and expire faster than powder. I know powders still expire, but I just, feel kind of icky digging into a cream product that I know mentally has been there for over a year. I just imagine it's like a petri dish filled with bacteria. So I did finish one cream product at least and I loved it. It was this Nude Sticks Nudies Matte in the shade Terracotta Tan, which I'm almost sure was sold out for most of the year. Hopefully it's back in stock, but I know this was really hard to get a hold of for a long time, but I loved it. And, and it lasted a pretty long time, but I was able to go through it quick enough that I didn't feel like, okay, this is kind of dragging on for a long time. And I finally finished this old Chanel bronzer. This was a limited edition compact. I believe it's basically the same formula as the Luminous Lay Beige, but this is two or three years old. It's the Healthy Glow Illuminating Powder in the shade Sunset. Beautiful powder. It had this kind of nautical CC logo on the front, so I might keep this packaging. I'm not sure I need to replace it right away. I wanna go through more of my bronzers, more of my cream bronzers before I pick up any other powder bronzers, especially from Chanel. Somehow I managed to go through four setting powders in 2022 and we have some hits and some misses. So the first powder I have here is this Bare Minerals Original Mineral Veil. This is the shade Sheer Light. I believe they expanded the shade range, so now they have more than just one, which was the white translucent. I did not love this powder. I kind of hate used it in that I knew I didn't really love it, so I just used it as quickly as possible. I hit pan pretty fast, and then I just wanted to get rid of it so that I could just throw it in the empties and be done. It looked a little bit too powdery on the skin. I never felt like it gave me that beautiful airbrushed soft focus glow. It didn't melt into the face like a lot of my other setting powders that are a bit finer. This next powder I really liked, but it, I'm not sure if it's something that I would replace. It's from NARS. This was also sent to me. It's the Translucent Crystal Light Reflecting Setting Powder. It's beautiful, so finely milled. Now this does give you that soft glow blur, kind of smooths everything out, minimizes the appearance of your pores, but because it's light reflecting and it's very subtle, I remember feeling like I, I wasn't properly set. Like I needed to go back with more powder. And then a little bit later I would need more powder and then more powder and then more powder and I just kept setting my face. So it was pretty easy to go through this in the end, but it did look really beautiful. I, I would recommend it. I don't think it's for everybody. If I remember correctly, I purchased this during this spring savings event last year. This is the Pat McGrath Labs powder, the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Blurring Under Eye Powder. It's a long name. I picked up the shade Light and love-hate relationship. I would not repurchase it though, because as much as I like the actual product, the powder itself is beautiful. It is so fragile. It is the most delicate powder. In fact, I looked at it funny once and it broke into a million pieces. So I ended up having to pour the remaining little cracks into my big tub of Chanel loose powder. I shook up the tub and I mixed all of the powder together. So I guess I can't say for certain that I finished this in 2022. It's really nice. I wish it wasn't so fragile. I mean, you couldn't travel with this. God forbid you drop it on the floor. It would just be a mound of dust. The fourth and final powder I finished is this Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder for under eyes in the shade one. I have gone through so many of these in my lifetime. It's a really great powder. I think it's a great staple. I go through these pretty quickly. 
but I still really like it. I think the price is pretty reasonable as well. It's maybe $26, $27. It used to be $26. It's probably more expensive now, but I have no need to replace this right away. I definitely want to go through some of the products that I have currently before I purchase anything else, but I do really like it. I would repurchase and I would recommend it as well. It gives you that beautiful, really bright under eye. No highlighters. Somehow in 2021, I was able to finish two highlighters. I'm getting kind of close with that Westman Atelier, so I imagine in 2023 we will have at least one. Ooh, I have a couple broken pieces in here. I don't want this to fall all over the floor. This I have already replaced. I want to savor those last little crumbles, but this is the Dior Backstage Rosy Glow Blush. It's beautiful. It's a cult classic. It's been around for years and years and years. It recently went viral, but this has been beloved by makeup artists for a really long time. It's so pretty. It gives this beautiful, very pink, happy, fresh-faced, very misty your beautiful blush. I almost waited until we talk about skincare, but I use this more as an illuminating primer. This is the Super Goop Glow Screen with SPF 40. I have two empties. I use this all the time. I talk about it all the time. It's one of my all-time favorite beauty staples. It's just always part of my routine. I already have replaced it. I'm pretty sure I have a backup to the one that I'm using. I don't think I have a backup to the backup, but I want to say I have two. And I did also pick up the new Golden Hour shade last year. So I have the deeper shade. I usually use the light, which is now called Sunrise. It's hydrating, it's luminous, it adds a little life to your foundation, it grips your foundation, and it has your sun protection. It's just one of the best. Before we move on to eyes and lips, I was able to finish two setting sprays, the Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist and the Too Faced Hangover RX 3-in-1 Spray. This was a little travel size, so it was smaller. I picked this up kind of on a whim at Sephora. I believe this was sent to me complimentary. I really liked it. Can I say there is a huge noticeable difference between the two? I honestly can't tell you there's a huge difference. I would replace them in the future. I may down the road. Right now I have a drawer filled with setting sprays, so I'm going to go through some of those first, but 10 out of 10. Another one of my beauty goals for 2023, along with using more of my cream products, it's to finally have an eyeshadow palette empty. I just feel like that would be so satisfying. This is the closest that I got in 2022. It's this liquid eyeshadow empty. This is from Kosas. It's the 10 second eyeshadow. I have the shade Globe. They have since reformulated these. I'm not sure if the new formula is the same, but I really liked it because it was so easy. This was my everyday eyeshadow. Just tap a little bit on the lid and then I would just usually dab it out with my fingers. Sometimes I would use a brush, but very easy, very flattering, and just quick. Typically, I use between three and five brow pencils a year. Last year, I went through three. This is the Precisely My Brow Pencil from Benefit. It's the only one I use. This is the Holy Grail. I I think I have a few other brands in my drawers, but this is really my go-to on a daily basis, unless I'm trying something new. Every once in a while, I'll switch it up, but for the most part, this is the one. And I usually wait until around the holidays when they have some sort of value set, two for one, something like that. So I always stock up on these pencils. I have plenty in my drawers because I always go for the deal. I know I'm going to use them, so might as well save some money. I also used up an entire brow wax from Anastasia. I'm almost done with the brow wax that I'm currently using, but you only need such a small amount. It's really deceptive because even once you hit the center, the center you use up first, but then you still have so much product around the edges that you, once you smooth all of that down, it will last you another five months. I think one of these basically lasts a full calendar year. I was holding out because I thought I could wait until the spring savings event, but Sephora had a 20% off sale deal where they were marked down and then 20% off. So I already have two of these reserved. In fact, I have to pick them up from Sephora today. Today's the last day. So I've already replaced it and I went ahead and bought two because the price was so good. I think it was maybe $16, maybe less than $16 each. I finished two eyeliners and two mascaras last year. Usually I go through more mascara. I think I just have so many open mascaras. Desperately need to go through them. This first eyeliner is from NARS. It's the Liquid Eyeliner Explicit Black. I think, yeah, the Climax Eyeliner. I really liked this. I think it has mediocre reviews on Sephora. I don't know why because I think it's amazing. It's a brush tip, but it's kind of flattened so you can create a really beautiful crisp wing. I would definitely replace this. 
have a lot of eyeliners at the moment, so I won't right away, but yes, I would use this again. This Bare Minerals, I did not like. This is the shade Copper. It's the Mineralist eyeliner. It was so-so. I used this in place of my Bruna Gopi from Chanel, but I would definitely repurchase the Chanel in the future. I wouldn't purchase this one. It was okay. This Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Push-Up Lashes is one of my favorite mascaras, and I didn't love it right away. There's a bit of a learning curve with this mascara, and I know you might think, oh, well, mascara should be really intuitive and user-friendly, so I'm not going to try it, but it is worth it. It's worth playing around with it a couple times to really get the technique because the brush is flat. You have to work the wrists a little bit. There's a bit of a twist whenever you're applying it, but wow, it is beautiful and it truly does push up the lashes. This Gucci mascara is amazing. I think this is the second tube I've gone through. It's been one of my favorite mascaras for a really long time. It lasts a long time as well. It has a beautiful tapered wand. It's so easy to get close to the base of the lashes, the lower lashes, the inner lashes. That's how I judge a mascara. If I can get all of the little nooks and crannies very easily without accidentally poking myself and smearing mascara all over the place, it's a win. So I love the Gucci mascara. I don't see myself replacing this because I recently picked up the Inimitable Intense Mascara from Chanel and the wand is very similar, but I do recommend these 10 out of 10. I finished a Babe Lash last year. I have a couple of these open. I probably should have gone through more than just one, but the Babe Lash Essential Serum has been my lash serum for a long time, years and years. Every once in a while, I think just to change things up, I'll use a new one. And I'm always very happy with what I use, but in the end, I will always go back to Babe Lash. I do have an ongoing promo code with them. I will link it down below and include the code. I generally try to remember to always include the code and list this in all of my videos because it works. You have to be consistent. You have to make it part of your evening skincare routine, but if you're consistent and you use this every day, your lashes will become so luscious and fluffy and long and it's the best. For the past two years now, it has been top priority to go through more of my lip products because I have such a huge collection and they don't last forever. That will continue into 2023. I'm gonna do my best not to purchase more lipsticks, but instead to just use up my favorites. And I do have a couple empties this year. I have two lip glosses, which I don't think I had any last year, but I did finish three lipsticks in 2021. I only have one lipstick this year. This is from Chanel. It's the Endless Pink, the La Rouge Duo Ultra Tenue Longwear Lipstick. This is my favorite lipstick formula. So no surprise that I was able to finish one of these. I'm actually wearing a combination of two shades today. This is Chic Beige and Intense Caramel, yes. I wanna use up some of the shades that I have so that I can buy more, it's sick. There's more that I wanna buy, but I just cannot justify it in my head. So I'm gonna do my best to use up more of these. This was one of my favorite colors. Unfortunately, this was limited edition. However, Endless Pink is very similar to Light Rose. I don't think you would be able to see a difference on the lips. Here I have a little nub of Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk, and the two glosses I finished, one of them is from Charlotte Tilbury. It's this Champagne Diamonds. I was using this every single day for a long time. It's such a pretty lip gloss. And then Opal from Laura Mercier. I think this has been discontinued which makes me really sad because this was one of my favorite lip glosses. I think this is maybe the second tube I'd gone through. It was really beautiful, but both of them are nude glosses. That's it for makeup, so now we're moving over to skincare. I went through a lot of cleansers, which I usually go through a lot of cleansers every year. I was able to finish two of my Chanel cleansers. This is Le Gel, one of my all-time favorites, and L'Eau de Mousse, which is a new favorite. This is the anti-pollution water to foam cleanser. I forgot that it, I even bought this, I think, whenever it launched. I don't remember how long this sat on my little skincare shelf, but I finally picked it up and I did go through this one pretty quickly. The La Gel takes a little bit longer to go through, but they're both beautiful. I always double cleanse, so I'll remove my makeup first. And then this is the cleanser that leaves my face feeling squeaky clean, but not stripped. Chanel cleansers are amazing. I think all of them are really good. I currently have Louis, the oil cleanser, in my bathroom right now. This next cleanser is the Dr. Dennis Gross Alpha Beta Pore Perfecting Cleansing Gel. 
I think this one lasted me the longest. It took me months to go through this. I don't know if harsh is the right word. It wasn't quite that aggressive, but I would say this was one of my strongest cleansers. So if you have really sensitive skin, I might go for something else instead, but if you are really acne prone, I think this could be a great cleanser for you. I finished two Josie Maron Pineapple Enzyme Pore Clearing Cleansers. This is the Foaming Face Wash. I really liked this. It's pretty gentle. I can't tell that it has a pineapple enzyme or that it's pore clearing. I just remember that it was great for removing all of my makeup, didn't irritate my eyes. Highly recommend this one. The last cleanser I finished is this JLo Beauty That Hit Single Gel Cream Cleanser. I really like the cleanser itself is amazing, but it's so thin and it's not too liquidy. I mean, it's a gel. It just kind of seeps right out of this bottle. I remember struggling with this. So I'm not sure I love this enough to replace it and I'm not sure I could recommend it. I mean, I recommend it because it's a nice cleanser. The cleanser itself is so great. They really need to fix this packaging because I probably wasted so much product because it would just seep out of this. For some reason, the cap does not twist properly or it doesn't lock it in. I finished four serums. The first one is this 111 Skin Y Theorem Repair Serum. I really love this and it is so expensive. This was sent to me complimentary. I want to replace it, but I just don't have the heart yet. I might down the road. I think I need to take a look at the inventory and see what serums I still have, but this feels amazing. The texture is so unique. It's kind of a gel but it sort of sits on top of the skin, but in a good way. It really feels like it is nourishing your skin. And in the morning, I felt like I had a beautiful glow. Like my face was completely even. I had no redness, no irritation. My skin just looked really beautiful the next day every time I used this. So I'm really sad that it's completely gone but it's a beautiful serum. This is one of my favorite skincare products and I've gone through more than just these two bottles, but I did finish two in 2022. It's the Biosan Squalene and Lactic Acid Resurfacing Night Serum. It says plant-derived squalene. It's not so intense that it burns or gives redness or irritation, but it definitely works. It's one of the first skincare products that's available at Sephora that I truly feel I can see a difference with my skin. The next day in the morning, my skin looks very calm, very even. I felt like it got, helped get rid of dark spots and even out my skin tone. I still get oily in my T-zone, so sometimes when I wake up in the morning, I have really large pores on my cheeks and nose. But with this serum, I feel like it helps to reduce the visibility of my pores as well, which is really nice. The last serum I finished is this Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Niacinamide Dew Drops. These are so popular and I've used this before and I didn't have any issues. For some reason, this started to break me out. I noticed, not on my face, thank goodness, but on my neck, I would apply it and it was only when I applied this and this only, and I've tested it, so I know it was this product that was bothering me. For whatever reason, it started to give me redness and like an itchy rash. And luckily it didn't get really bad, but it started right here specifically and it kind of grew on my neck. So I stopped using it. I did finish the bottle um, because I would only use it on my face. I didn't have any problems on the face, but not something I will replace. I think you have to be careful sometimes with fruit ingredients. Even though it's natural, it can still be irritating. Not a huge fan. I have three moisturizer empties. This one I just finished recently. It was maybe the 31st I was able to finish this. It's from Amore Pacific. It's the Time Response Skin Reserve Fluid. I don't think this is technically a moisturizer. I think this is supposed to be a step in between essence or toner and your moisturizer, but it feels kind of thick. It feels like a very thin, lightweight moisturizer, but too thick to be an essence. It's almost like a melted moisturizer. It's so nice. I love this so much. This I would 100% replace and it lasts such a long time. I mean, I've had this for months and months and months. So even though it's expensive, I believe the time response is their elevated skincare line. Because you will have it such a long time and you can use this morning and night as a moisturizer, 
I think this is well worth it. I also went through this little La Mer. This is a, it's a small one. This is a 0.5 ounce or a 15 ml. It's the original creme de la mer, so it's pretty thick. You only need a small amount. I really liked it. I wouldn't say this is one of my favorite moisturizers. I know la mer is famous. They have a cult following. I do really like their products, but I actually prefer maybe the regenerating oil. They have other products besides the moisturizer that I think are better. And I don't love the smell of this either. It's very hydrating, but so are all of my other moisturizers. I don't think it made such a difference with my skin that I have to replace it right away. And finally, I have the number one de Chanel Red Camellia Revitalizing Cream. This I'll hold on to just in case I do replace it because you can hold on to the jar and simply replace the little red inner jar and you save, I think, maybe $15. So there are some savings there. I really liked this moisturizer. It's really nice for daytime. It's pretty light, has a very fresh, slightly floral, very Chanel scent to it, but it felt really nice on the skin. Kind of like the La Mer. I'm not sure if I noticed such a huge difference. Maybe because I wasn't using this in conjunction with the serum and the entire line of products. I like it. I'm not sure it's my favorite. In fact, I think I might even prefer the Hydra Beauty or maybe the Lilift Moisturizer instead of this. I also went through one tube of the Obagi Retinol. This is the Retinol 0.5 Retexturizing Cream. I would have to double check the name. I'm pretty sure this is what I'm currently using and I'm almost done with the second tube. Highly recommend, it is very intense. So you wanna space it out, especially when you first start using it, but Obagi products are incredible. This is the Obagi Clinical. I went through seven makeup melting balms. Six of them are the Pharmacy Green Clean. I have a couple limited edition flavors here. So I have a peach, peaches and clean. I also have, let's see, peach and thyme lemon mint and then a few others so some of them are the large jars some of them are the smaller tub and then the only outlier was the saturday skin melt and cleanse which i loved and i actually think because it's a little slushier it's not quite as hard of a balm it's kind of more convenient it's a little bit faster although i love both and unfortunately saturday skin isn't available at sephora anymore so i imagine i will just continue to restock the pharmacy i'm gonna spare you going through the rest of my empties i have a lot of miscellaneous bath and body products and i have a feeling this video is going to be very long but i did want to share just a few notable items before i finish i went through three kp bump erasers this is from first aid beauty it's one of my all-time favorite beauty products it's another must-have for me so i have one in the bathroom and i already have a backup one of those products I will never be without. It's just the best exfoliator for the body. It is so intense. It also has oatmeal, so it helps to calm the skin. But if you need an exfoliator to really scrub the skin, this is the best there is. Smells terrible, but very effective. These are my two favorite hair masks. I think I went through seven, maybe eight hair masks last year. I went through two of the money mask from Chris Appleton in Color Wow, and then I restocked this, I think I picked up two on sale, and it wasn't enough. I think I'm already almost done with one of them. It's amazing. Next time I know I need to pick up maybe five or six of these masks, it detangles the hair beautifully. So yes, it's hydrating, but what I love so much about it, or the difference I noticed with this mask versus others, because there are a lot of good hair masks out there, but what this one does is it just detangles the hair. I don't know how, but when I'm in the shower and I'm washing my hair and I apply this mask, when I rinse it out, it's as if I have no more tangles. The hair just glides, it just separates. There's no knots, no tangles. It makes every strand silky smooth. And the best mask for all over moisture, nourishment, just bringing hair back to life, this black mask, it's the Chronologiste from Kerastase is really good. It smells amazing as well. It's very expensive. I think this is $70, so make sure you pick it up on sale. I picked this up during one of the savings events at Sephora, but it is worth it. It's really, really intense. Not just hydrating, it just kind of breathes life back to color-treated hair. So if you don't have a lot of color damage or heat damage, 
you probably don't need something like this. I finished several Olaplex products. I see a shampoo, a number eight mask, two number threes. I love the number three. You have to use it correctly. You can overuse this. I know some people say that it dries out their hair. It's not a hydrator. It's not a hair mask. It's a bond builder. So if you, again, if you have color treated hair only, this is incredible. And now I kind of alternate. So I will use the number three treatment maybe once or twice a month, but I think it makes a huge difference with how my hair feels after I've used this. Another product I will never be without. I also went through a lot of Sol de Janeiro products. This is one of my favorites. It's the Beja Flor Elasti Cream. This was one of my favorite new launches of 2022. It smells incredible. And I already have a full size tub, so I'm starting to go through that as well. But this is amazing. I'm so surprised I was able to finish one of these because I have so many body lotions open at the moment. But this scent is so nice and it layers so beautifully beneath fragrance. Speaking of fragrance, I have one fragrance empty and it's not even a full-size bottle, but it's something. This is the Little Travel Spray of Maison Francis Kurgian Gentle Fluidity Gold. My one fragrance empty. Another goal of mine for 2023 is to have more fragrance empties. It's tough because I have so many that I love. I'm rotating between all of them. Yeah, I might have a significant dent, but it would be pretty tough to actually finish a bottle. There are a few that I'm pretty close to. Tom Ford Lost Cherry, I'm almost done with one bottle. I've already replaced it. And then I'm actually making my way through the Maison Francis Kurgian Baccarat Rouge 540. That will likely be in a 2023 empty video. And that does it for today. Another year in the books. I can't believe it. I finished so many incredible products in 2022. And now I feel like I have a good game plan going into 2023. I kind of know what products I need to use up from my collection. And if you have saved your empties, let us know if you learned anything interesting down below in the comment section. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Any of the notable items that I would recommend, I will link down below in the description box simply for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.